Okay, so a couple of updates. I'm gonna try to keep this as brief as possible. So my last video regarding episode two was demonetized, but I think I can figure out how to fix that. I got comments on my posts on my community tab as to how to fix it. Um, so thank you guys for your advice. And I think I have some ideas as to how to resolve this issue. As far as I'm concerned, I think the only issue was that like, there was like a 10 second clip where like a song was playing and because of that, like it got blocked in some countries. So, I mean, it's no problem. I didn't really say much like during that scene anyway. So yeah, I'll figure something out. Yeah, cause I'm in the YouTube partnership program now. Please clap. <laughs> So yeah, this is clearly important to me now, so I have to make sure that every single video that gets published actually goes out for the entire world to see. So yes, it's true, I am a YouTube partner now! Yay! <laughs> so thank you again for sharing, for liking, for commenting, and for subscribing. It really helps my channel a lot, and it's really important that with a show like Miss Marvel, you know, we have critics who are of similar backgrounds for Kamala. I'm not Pakistani, I'm not even South Asian, but I am Muslim and this does matter to me a lot. I was a little disappointed at the news that Miss Marvel's debut had the lowest viewership debut of an MCU series. Of course, like there are different factors to consider, like maybe it was the marketing, maybe it was the target audience, but if it wasn't for the critics of the show, who broke down the reasons why Miss Marvel is so critically acclaimed, then it wouldn't have started picking up traction. It's just funny to me how like Miss Marvel had like the lowest viewership debut, but like it is the highest ranking MCU show on Rotten Tomatoes. I guess that goes to my point as to why like critics of, I guess not just similar backgrounds, but like critics who come in watching this with an open mind, right? That's what helps the show gain the reception that it deserves. So yeah, that's just a little rant that I have. Um, so on to Miss Marvel now, obviously. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to today's episode. There is going to be a Pakistani slash African-American Walima. And for those who don't know, a Walima is like the official wedding ceremony. Like, you know how like in, I guess, Western weddings, it's like you have like the wedding at the church and then the reception. Like think of the Walima like the reception. I wonder if there's like a South Asian equivalent of that. Yeah, cause I noticed with like South Asians, like particularly people from Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, India, certain Islamic vocabulary terms are different from the ones that I know. An example I can think of actually is, um, you know, when you're fasting Ramadan, like the early morning meal that you have, right? Like I call it suhoor, but South Asians call it uh, Sahri, I believe? Maybe there's like a completely different term that I'm not aware of, but we shall see. But yeah, going back to the clip that came out on Tuesday, it looks like fun, but going back to the trailer for the show, I might have to brace myself because I think we'll be expecting a wedding crasher or two and Kamala will have to fight back because that is not gonna happen at her brother's wedding. Another thing is I hope we'll also get answers to the cliffhanger in episode two where we learn more about Kamran's mom, Najma, I believe that's her name. Some of y'all have theories where Kamala and Kamran might be cousins, but I think that would be awkward given the fact that Kamala had a crush on him. I don't know, we shall see. So I am going to switch gears now and I will see you in a second. I got my chai ready. All right, Miss Marvel, let's get it. Girl, Previously know. on Miss Marvel. <laughs> oh yeah, I wonder if we'll get more info on Aisha. Oh yeah. She's gonna have to redeem herself from that. I will be back with a review shortly. I am back with, I think, Two, three pages of notes per usual. Episode three was directed by Mira Menon. Again, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm so sorry if I mess up your name. I have mostly positives for this episode. Two negatives, 
And one prediction and one question. I have no neutral points. I'm gonna start off with the positive comments. First off, Kamala got to embiggen. Like, she was freaking swinging her fist. I'm glad that we got to see her shapeshift again. I like how the other powers that she has within the bangle don't take away from her shapeshifting abilities. Well, okay, I say shapeshifting lightly, but like, she can still embiggen, which is pretty nice. Another positive comment is, um, <laughs> I loved how Deaver and the damage control team just like stomped into the mosque as if like they own the place and that she doesn't give a damn about cultural sensitivity. But the reason why I loved it so much was because like later on the Imam just like shut her down with kindness and a smile on his face and Nakia like shut her down with her intellect. That woman and her team had no business stomping into the mosque with their filthy shoes on. Like maybe they missed the sign that said, hey, no shoes allowed past this point. But yeah, Nakia shutting Deaver down with her intellect. So well-deserved after winning her nomination as a board member. The youth really are the future. Another point is that I also love how it was the younger folks, Kamala, Bruno, and Kamran, who fought back like five grown adults. I mean, it's what they deserve because if Najma and the gang knew what conflict resolution was instead of just ambushing a teenager, then they wouldn't have ended up in that situation. Ah, <sighs> the audacity of grown-ups. And I'm a grown-up. Although on the other hand, I liked how kind and caring Muniba and Yusuf were. They had the sweetest things to say to their children and I loved how their speeches were on the importance of family and sticking together, especially because in um, immigrant families, like they're very family oriented. I mean, Amr, he didn't move out of his parents' home until he got married. So it is pretty normal in immigrant families to keep living with your parents even after you turn 18, unless like, I don't know, you go off to college far away or you get married. You know, like just because you're 18, it doesn't mean that's it, move out of your parents' home forever and never see them again. So I really loved how Muniba and Yusuf, like they were very family oriented. I mean, of course they're parents, it's what they do, but it's like, don't lose sight of the love from your family. And also going on that same point, I loved how Kamala and Muniba had a scene together and Yusuf and Amr, they had a scene together. It was like mother to daughter and father to son. So that was pretty wholesome. Hmm, maybe grown-ups aren't all bad. Also, another grown-up who is doing it right is the Imam. I like the Imam's friendly demeanor. Oftentimes, religious leaders get like a bad rep for misusing their position of authority. The only other examples of positive representation of Imams are um, Little Mosque on the Prairie, Mahershala Ali's character in Rami, and now Imam Sheikh Abdullah from Miss Marvel. What they all have in common is that although they have responsibilities, they will take the time to get to know you and sort of build this rapport with you. You know, imams are supposed to be like all wise men who are fostering their communities with smiles on their faces and arms wide open. It would have been irresponsible if imams were depicted as unfriendly misogynists who make faith their entire personality. Of course, they do set boundaries, that's very important. Um, but they're not trying to be your best friend. They're trying to be more like a caring, familiar, familial figure, like an uncle or an older brother or even a fatherly figure. I mean, in Islam, like we do call other men in our community our brothers, the same way that we call other women in our community sisters. And also that quote he said, good is not a thing you are, it's a thing that you do. So important. Another positive was I liked how they split the wedding into three sections. The um, Mahdi, which is the henna party, like in, in a henna party, what, what happens is like, I think the bride, I don't know about what happens in the groom's side, like that's none of my business, but on the bride's side of things, like, you know, she gets like her henna done and um, yeah, like sometimes it can be done like not, I wouldn't say all over, but like mostly like your hands and your feet. And it's like, it's like a nice girls get together. And then the nikah, which is the signing of the contract, which usually happens at a mosque, 
where there are witnesses. It's kind of like how in non-Muslim weddings, like when the bride and groom get married at a church, right? They exchange vows and that kind of stuff. So um, the nikah is kind of like that, except I don't think there's really an exchangement of vows. I have actually never been to a nikah in my entire life. So, um, and then the third part of that was the walima, which is the reception portion of that. The thing is though, I did not expect the nikah and the walima to be in the same day. Cause like, isn't it true that in Pakistani weddings or even South Asian weddings, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not South Asian, but this is just my observation. Weddings are not one day. It's literally like, it can be like, it can span an entire year, I think. I don't know. Maybe it can be a few months. I'm not too sure. But I do know that like wedding events in those communities don't just happen on a singular day. So, I mean, that part was a little unrealistic. See, there you go. That's my neutral point right there. <laughs> but I really like the attention to detail. I like that, um, I'm so sorry if I butchered her name, but um, Taisha, the, um, the wife, Amr's wife, I was happy to see her family there. And I think like even her, like her little brother or something like, you know, he was having fun on the dance floor and I thought that was so cute. So yeah, that's segueing to my next positive point. I liked how the dance scene at the wedding was something out of a Bollywood movie with like fun dance numbers and vibrant colors and cool moves. It made me wish I was there. Like I wish I could blue skidoo onto my TV and like blue skidoo, we can too be there with them. And then the last two positive points I am going to note, uh, production once again came through and the music choices were great. We have a mix of South Asian artists and also I was not expecting Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. So yeah, it was pretty nice. I'm going to have to check at some point if the soundtrack is on Spotify. So I've already sort of shared my neutral points, so I think I'm just gonna go to negative. So one complaint that I have is that this episode was the shortest so far, and I feel like it moved a little bit fast. Actually, now that I think about it, one of the questions I was gonna say was like, Zoe, where are you? Are you okay? But yeah, like I was hoping for like a little bit more wiggle room to get some questions answered, but I guess not. The last negative point I'm gonna say is I didn't like that the, the clandestines or the clandestines, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm so sorry. I didn't like that they were also known as the jinn in which it's synonymous to demons. It was like right from the get-go that I thought that this group of people are gonna mean trouble, but like the things that demons do is like far worse than what this group of people have done to ambush Kamala and Kamran and Bruno and like the entire wedding venue. And then the last two points that I'm gonna share, these are predictions that I would like to see for episode four. I hear that episode four of MCU shows is like the climactic, maybe potentially, possibly the best episode of the series. My prediction is that I hope they reveal Red Dagger. Last prediction I have is, so if they're filming the scenes in Karachi, which, okay, I did a little research and it turns out that they didn't actually film it in Pakistan. They filmed it in Thailand, which, okay, set production, I guess. I mean, we've seen glimpses of like the streets of Karachi and, and other settings within, well, what's supposedly Karachi from either the trailer or, um, promotional ads or photos or anything like that. Yeah, so my prediction, I mean, I'm, you already know this, but I really hope they don't put that stupid yellow filter to make it look like a damaged country. Like when I think of Pakistan now, I think of like color, right? Vibrant colors, like even looking at the poster for Miss Marvel where they have all the characters, right? Like I wanna see street art, I wanna see food vendors, I wanna see bazaars if they if they have that in Pakistan or like the equivalent of that I don't know like I want the best of Karachi in next week's episode so my expectations are high all right but yeah this episode I would rate it hmm 
instead of just giving you like a fraction, I'm gonna make this interesting. I am gonna rate this of <laughs> eight and a half out of 10 nightlights. How about that? <laughs> But yeah, that is all three pages of my notes that I've been through, and that is it for the review. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what did you think of episode three, and what are your predictions for episode four? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, like, wh what are you waiting for? Come on. Don't forget to follow me on my social media, which I will link below. Don't forget to ring the bell so that you don't miss out on my content. But other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Take care. Bye.